Hi everyone and welcome to uh, yet another walkthrough video. Um, this uh, video will be dealing with <clears throat> giving you all a clear understanding, hopefully, of how the English verb tense system works um, and hopefully help you to master a few more tenses in the English language. Contrary to popular belief, um, English is logical. Not many people uh, believe or know that, but indeed it's true. And I hope to show you why and how that is um, through this tutorial. Okay. Firstly, um, let's just try to get to grips with, understand how, well, the fact that humans understand time and that we express this understanding uh, in, in verbal language, of course. We all understand the concept of the past, the present, and the future. And, well, indeed, one could argue that this is the element of um, sort of human consciousness that, you know, distinguishes us from um, animals. Uh, for more information on that, you can look into, for example, sociolinguistics or um, linguistics and uh, the human brain. But essentially, it's enough to know that the fact that all of you out there watching this um, understand the concept of the past the present and the future, because again, that's part of uh, the human condition. The crux of it is, however, that languages express this concept uh, in different ways. Indeed, well, all languages deal with and express some concept of the passage of time. It just depends on uh, which language we're referring to. How does English do this? Well, let's take a look. Okay. First of all, we know that there are three, um, you know, sort of concepts to time, uh, past, present, and future. This is, you know, sort of um, universal to all language, human languages. The way that English makes sense of this and structures it within the language system is by designating three what we call moods. Uh, the simple mood the continuous mood, and the perfect mood. Now, some textbooks may call this aspect, uh, but it's basically, I like the word mood. It's a little bit more colorful. And some textbooks may, and teachers may refer to the, what's known as the continuous mood as the progressive. Um, you know, both words are accurate, and we'll see why in a moment. All right, so here's our table. Uh, we've got time on one side and we've got mood on the other. Now, let's take the first um, of the tenses of the moods, actually. And probably everyone out there already knows the basics to how this works. Okay, we've got the simple tenses. Now, these tenses are used generally to show habits, facts, things that are true all the time. Um, I'm not gonna go into detail about the simple uh, tenses because, again, if you're watching this video, you're probably at a fairly advanced level of English and um, the ones you need to get to grips with are more the difference between the continuous and the perfect. But in any case, okay, past simple, well obviously yesterday I walked to the supermarket, that's past. Um, in the present tense, today or every day, habit, every day I walk to the supermarket. And future, simple. Uh, tomorrow, you know, I, every day in the present, I walk to the supermarket. This is a habit. This is a fact. Simply so. So tomorrow in the future, I will walk to the supermarket. Okay, let's take a look at um, another of the tenses. This is the continuous um, tense. Now, these tenses are used to show action or process, progress, uh, thus, that's why we call them continuous. And these tenses all have ing. You can see this is the sort of um, indicator um, of these tenses. Now, okay, let's take a look at the present. See, English is logical. If it's the present continuous, well, that means it's going to have an ing because it's continuous. And it's going to have a present tense verb. So I am walking. At this very moment, I'm walking to the supermarket fine. It shows an action, you know, in process over time at this present moment. What's cool about English 
is that you can also formulate this in the past. So here's past continuous. Um, yesterday, I was walking to the supermarket around three o'clock when my mom called on my mobile phone. Okay, so you see that it's past? Again, logical. It's past, there's was. And here's the continuous tense, there's ing. Now let's take a look at the future. Um, again, it's a continuous tense, so we're referring to an action in the future at some point in time. And the future tense will give us the will be. So tomorrow, um, I expect I will be walking to the supermarket around 3 o'clock. So you won't find me at home at that time. All right, again, continuous tenses, action, process, ing. And your knowledge of time as a human um, will help you to get to grips with um, all these nine tenses. Let's look at the perfect. Okay, what are the perfect tenses all about? Well, these are used to show finished results. You know, in comparison with the continuous tenses, which are all about action, process, perfect tenses are really about something that's finished and that um, we're emphasizing the result. Now, these tenses all have what's called a past participle in English. Now, that's the third form of the word. For example, walked or written, driven, eaten, uh, gone. Um, that's your third form. Okay. Let's take a look at the present. Perfect. Well, again, English is logical. The perfect tense would indicate that this is about a finished result, and that's why we use this form to, you know, indicate it's finished. But it's finished in the present. Aha. Uh -huh. So one could say, um, in my lifetime up to this moment, this present moment, I have walked many miles. And we're talking about a finished result up to the present moment that started in the past. We've got past perfect. Again, English is logical. There's your past tense and there's your uh, past participle. So you could formulate a sentence that says something like, um, before I was um, 20 years old, I had walked many miles um, across this globe, <laughs> being a bit dramatic here. But okay, the past perfect shows us something in the past that happened before something else in the past. Again, past perfect. Now, we can also formulate this um, in the future. So here's our participle, walked, that shows it's a finished result. And here's our future construction. You notice, um, I will have walked. Oh gosh, by the time I turn uh, 50 years old, I will have walked many, many miles, more than you can imagine. What do all the perfect tenses have? Well, they all have this past participle, but they also have um, have. Now that's the verb we use to formulate this. The continuous tenses use the verb to be, either in the past, the present, or the future, and an ing form. So that's how we form them, and that's sort of the logic, the structure to how we English speakers make sense of time. 